What's up, everybody, and welcome back to our live coverage from Gamescom. You know, we've been hitting you with game after game after game of demos. I think it's, uh, now would be a good time to sort of, sort of take a step back and digest some of the uh, announcements and the news that's been coming out of Gamescom this week. And we do that with a little show called Game Scoop. I'm Damon Hatfield. I'm joined by Brian Altano. What's up? Daniel Krupa from our UK office. Guys, uh, how are we feeling about this year's Gamescom in terms of uh, quality of the, g the game lineup and quality of announcements, the excitement level? 15 out of 10. 15? Wow. That's pretty I've good. I've literally 15. never been more excited. No, I think pretty strong. Uh, it's been a really cool <laughs> show. Uh, this is my first time really sort of watching all of Gamescom come together. Uh, when I came last year, I was mostly in the studio working on things. I got to walk the show floor this year and kind of actually see how massive this convention it's is. It's ridiculous. I like think it's generally yeah. ridiculous. Like we all got to go to E3, and yeah. you know, we think that's like a big event, and it's busy. Yeah. It's nothing compared to Gamescom. The amount of people. Yeah, E3 hogs all the credit from the games industry all year, and yep. then you get to Gamescom, and like I walked in the show floor, there's a TIE fighter. Like, a, life, a, <laughs> like a life size TIE fighter. Yeah, it's, I don't yeah. know if it works. I don't know if it flew in there. <laughs> no, but it's like but the it's size a, a TIE yeah. fighter would be. What, yeah, what yeah. it would be, which is kind of awesome. And then like over to the side, there's you know these two cars from Need for Speed. There's an X-Wing. There's all these activations. Um, it's really cool. I think that like sort of announcement-wise, it's an interesting show because it happens after E3. It happens after Comic-Con. It yeah. happens before yeah. PAX in the fall. But it's also sort of like the last big push from yeah, publishers to be like, we've got stuff coming this fall. I think it's a weird one. I think it's mainly for the public. Like yeah. we get to play these games at E3, this is where people who are actually buying these games in the next four yeah. months get to play them. And I think that's where you find with conferences, they're sometimes scraping around for announcements and you shouldn't have a conference if you don't have stuff to announce. Like, yeah. the, like the EA conference is a little bit threadbare. Same yeah. with the Xbox presence was kind of half conference. They don't quite have the announcements they have at E3. But I don't think that's the point of this event. There are a lot of uh, like E3 trailers that sort of like casually get <laughs> folded into the, the run of show with these new conferences and stuff like that. But you know, I mean, I think if you're sort of selling people on, this is what our brand is doing, this is what our company's doing, or in Xbox's case, like this is what our new console can do, yeah. I think it's important to tell that story all at the same time. Yeah, and just in terms of uh, attendance levels, there's nothing else as big as Gamescom. Right? Yeah, it's, what like, is it, like 350 billion people? 350 it's, it's billion people. It's roughly people. that. Yeah. yeah, it's about yeah. that, yeah. yeah. More or less. Feels like more. Yeah. Uh, it's the no, it's actually, <laughs> the, the crowds here are much bigger even from, than they are at TGS, yep. which is uh, also a much larger show than E3 is, or, uh, or PAX. So. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people here checking out the games, uh, again, come this week. It's an exciting show. Plus, you mentioned the Microsoft conference that uh, took place on Sunday, I believe. So that's a pretty good place to start. Uh, it, is, it was a little threadbare, like you mentioned, in terms of uh, big game announcements, but they did finally put the Xbox One X up for sale, up yeah. for pre-order, yeah. basically. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that was exciting. Yeah, I've been waiting for that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. They, did, they announced like, a limited edition version of it, the, the Project, Project Scorpio, Scorpio version. Edition. Yeah. Which I thought was like a really cool thing to do, because like video game consoles and handhelds always have kind of ridiculous uh, code names. Yeah. But the developers always just kind of drop them, leave them behind, and keep going. You know, like when I bought a Nintendo DS, it, it, I couldn't get the day one Nitro edition. No, or yeah. I would I love to have a, a Dreamcast Katana edition. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> Dolphin GameCube, yeah. right? Like none of those things ever really happened. But here we got specifically, they were like, we've called this Scorpio for so long. Since day one, that was like their public facing way of saying, like, we're working on this new thing. And now you can get this Scorpio edition on day one, which I think is pretty smart. Yeah, it is smart. It's, you know, Microsoft takes a lot of criticism for their lack of uh, their first party lineup of games. However, they do this fan service stuff really well, yeah, I think. I totally you know, agree. Like yeah, it's similar to when the Xbox One came out, they did the day one edition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it feels like you're a part of this like, elite club. Like, if yeah. you're like the super hardcore, you want to embrace this console in a big way, it's cool to have that in your living room. Yeah, no, yeah. I love that. It says it right in my controller. It's just like bragging rights. Yeah. But, I did think the Minecraft edition was cooler. That's it's the thing. Yeah, you like that one? Yeah. yeah. I, got, like, I think I, I just saw some glimpses, uh, but expl sort of explain what yeah, it's Yeah, so like, uh, while you guys have been in the studio, I've been in the trenches out there. Yeah. I've actually seen <laughs> stuff. We thank you for your service. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so we, like, we went and got hands-on with the consoles, and yeah. we saw the Minecraft edition, and it's so cool. Like, it's really cool. There's a lot of special editions. We see a lot of special editions, yeah. and you feel like some of them are quite lazy. You know, you just slap the logo on it. But this was like a lot of little detail. So the controller, like... The, the font on the buttons is the Minecraft font. 
and on the back, on the on the reverse of the controller, you have a little TNT symbol. Yeah, I saw There's that. There's a pig controller that has a little curly tail on the reverse side. It's got a little side. like pixelated like, pig's tail on it. Like, it's, it's been great. like considered rather than just going yeah. slap a Minecraft yeah. cube on it. It yeah. reminds me of when they did the uh, the Star Wars C3PO and R2D2 Xbox 360s. Yes. That's that like a really like, good like. Yeah. That's such a cool limited edition console compared to like the PS4 mm -hmm. Star Wars console, which is like. I have that one on my desk at work. I, like I'm not gonna complain because it's Star Wars, but it's just a picture of Darth Vader, and I yeah. feel like it's the kind of thing that like if you're limited edition console looks like something you could get from like a sticker store or yep. like an Etsy shop, mm -hmm. then they need to go back to the drawing board on it. And yeah. this this feels like legit and special. And I think I remember reading that it makes sounds too. Yeah. It does like I think it's got loads of like little tiny details that mm -hmm. really like like deliver the Minecraft feel. For something that is based on dirt and grass, <laughs> it's really cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, during the Microsoft conference, they also uh, actually surprised us with a new game that people are actually really excited about. That's uh, Jurassic World Evolution. Yeah. Uh, a sim game from the, uh, I think, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the Planet Coaster yeah, guys, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this has actually one of been one of the most popular games on IGN this week. So people are definitely excited about it. Oh, that's awesome. Like. If there was ever a game that seemed like an absolute no-brainer, yeah. it's this one. Like we've had kind of like Jurassic Park Sims in the past, but it's not <laughs> been one for a while. And also this kind of game on a console as well. Mm -hmm. Like that's not been a thing. Yeah, yeah, I messed around with the Jurassic Park Builder app thing that came out <laughs> on iPads. Oh man, it's so yeah. fun to watch. A couple months after the uh, last Jurassic Park movie came out of Jurassic World, and it's cool, but it was it had like it was very sort of like free to play. It stuck it stuck its sort of like claws in, no pun intended. Constantly to be like, pay us for this, you give us money for this. Pub. I totally should, intended it. You should have intended it at but least. But one of the things that. I really like about this game is like, you're like, well, what the hell can like 4K do for a game like this? And it's like, well, maybe a lot. Like they're, they're actually, rendering all yeah. these effects, all these trees, all these dinosaurs. I can actually see the benefit on a game like this where you've got loads of like tiny details. Like, yeah. I think 4K come into its own. Actually. Yeah, this looks really awesome. And it, it feels like the kind of thing like I want to build out my own Jurassic World and I want to like open up the pens and just like screw up. Like, let the stegosauruses run out <laughs> and start hitting people. There's a, 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 a proud tradition in sim games of uh, inviting monsters to come in yeah. and wreck the city. Right? Yeah, ever since, like, I remember, like, SimCity was one of the first ones, and I played it on the Super Nintendo, where there was just, like, a, a button to bring in Bowser, and he yeah. would just come in and just wreck <laughs> everything. And they're like, yeah, let me do that with a T-Rex. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, people love... Jurassic Park, they love Jurassic Park video games. Uh, the old like Genesis uh, Jurassic Park games were really popular. So mm -hmm. maybe people are just excited to have another Jurassic Park game. Yeah, like the fact that Jurassic, like, I reviewed Jurassic World for yeah. us, and like, yeah. in respect, I may, may have given that movie too high a score. Mm -hmm. But I'm just a huge Jurassic Park fan. Like, yeah. I grew up, you know, I was like eight years old when that movie came out. Yeah. And like that, I've had conversations with friends who are a similar <coughs> age to me. That, for my generation, was my generation Star Wars. Yeah. And I feel like mm -hmm. one of the reasons Jurassic World was so huge, so one of the biggest movies of all time, is because people love that kind of brand so much, that kind of yeah. property. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, the EA conference, they took that opportunity to finally unveil the space battles in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. And Brian, you got to play. I did. Uh, so here's how my experience went. <laughs> I got into the X-Wing and just immediately died. Then I kept going, and then I died again, and I died again, and I died again. And I was like, this game looks gorgeous. It sounds incredible. But oh my god, they made it so hard. And then I started talking to some of the people at EA, and I found out that I was put into a session with a bunch of just pro players. <laughs> so it's not harder. I just played really good people, and also I suck. Well. Aside from uh, uh, getting, <laughs> getting wrecked. Aside from sucking. By pro players. <laughs> Uh, it's authentic, it's gorgeous, it's quicker, which is the most important thing. I put like 100 hours into the last Battlefront game, and uh, one of the things I noticed with the dogfighting the last time around was when you did crash, it would take about like 30 or 40 seconds of just like kind of like coasting in back into space, and you would watch the battle ensue for, from far away. But the difference about this game is that you sort of immediately snap back in. Like you explode, and you're right back in there, and you keep going. The other thing that's like really cool about it is Say you're not great at hitting TIE fighters because they're moving targets, they're moving too quick for you. There's a lot of objective-based stuff they asked, add this time around that's sort of just like taking out shield generators, taking out sort of like legs of a big ship, you know, yeah. support columns and stuff. And all of that builds up your points, and using those points, you can actually trade them in and unlock the Millennium Falcon and take a couple laps with that, or Slave One, or Darth Maul's ship. Whereas back in the day, all of those were based on sort of hero tokens and pickups. Mm. So you had this rush at the beginning of the map to pick up a token and now you kind of can just sit back and play the way you play and still get rewarded for it. Now, one of the biggest questions people have had about this mode is uh, people are hoping you can land your ship inside the bigger ships and get out. Yeah, and people are really obsessed with that boarding, basically. Yeah. They uh, really want to board these ships. But we haven't seen that so far. No, not yet. So and I what don't are you thinking? 
Um, I don't think that's going to be a part of it now. I feel like if it was, we would have found out about it yeah. today. Yeah. Well, this feels like well, this whole mode's been made by a separate studio. Yeah. It's made by Criterion. Criterion. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I feel like this is um, like it's within Battlefront 2, but it's kind of well, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's within the game. And Criterion is known for uh, like vehicle stuff, not really yeah. on foot. Yeah. No, no, sort of realistic balance. vehicle yeah. stuff, which I think is interesting that they're working with stuff that's fake. And they and yeah, <laughs> and they did the Battlefront like VR experience. Yeah. Recently. Yeah, yeah, which I really dug. Um, no word on it if that's happening this time around, but I really hope something like that does happen. Now, one of the things I do really like about this game is uh, the last, the last Battlefront game for consoles didn't really take advantage of, you know, the the PlayStation uh, 4 Pro. It didn't take mm -hmm. advantage of the, you know, Xbox One X. It hadn't been launched yet. Um, this game will take advantage of all those things. So that's pretty awesome because it's going to be the most gorgeous Star Wars game we've ever played. It is. Definitely gorgeous. Yeah. Are you how are you getting a sense of how robust this mode is uh, in terms of so how many maps and how yeah, many modes? and like that's the weird thing about this game that I think that like even after the last game launched and people really dinged it for it being like light on modes, light on content. If you look at that game a year later, right? Like if you were to jump on a Steam sale or one of those like PlayStation sales and you bought this game, the full season pass, everything for like 15, 20 bucks, like you're getting a ton of stuff. But at launch, there wasn't a lot there. And I'm kind of worried we're going to get into the same scenario here. They're being a little quiet about what goes where, what we're getting. You know, I, they, they have said the first season is free and included with everything, mm -hmm. which is cool. But like, what am I playing on day one, right? How many maps are there? How many ships are there? Yeah. How many heroes are there? Yeah. Right, well, how, what's the reaction been like? Um, with, the, with the fans, with the community. I think people are excited for this one. I think that like the the dogfighting definitely seems like it's a little less arcadey, although still working towards that. But I think all in all, the game will be more robust. And I think that they moved away from that kind of stingy price model we saw the first time around is making people happy. Yeah. But you know, ultimately, video games are a business. So we'll see if they start selling me like Luke Skywalker robes or like he's got a different lightsaber or somebody else has a different hat because I'm dumb enough to buy all this. <laughs> I love Star Wars. Cooper, what are your, how, how, what's your read on uh, Battlefront 2? I, I think Battlefront 2, uh, in my head, is I hope it's going to be like Assassin's Creed 2. So it really delivers on that promise of the first game. Yeah. You yep. play the first game and you're like, this is such a cool premise and this is like most of the game that I want it to be. Then 2 comes along and fixes all the problems of 1 and delivers a bit more as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, speaking of Assassin's Creed, we had Assassin's Creed Origins on the show earlier this week, and that game continues to look really, really cool to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got to take a look at um, a mission in Memphis, which I learned is uh, one of the oldest cities in the world, and mm -hmm. not, not just uh, a <laughs> city in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. It's like all your city names. You're all ripping them all off. Yeah, I know. We've actually stolen everything as Americans, <laughs> and we will continue well to, because we don't know what else to do. <laughs> look how pretty this game is. It really does look gorgeous. Um, I, I'm, I think that like there's a there's a weird word that I'm using to describe this game that I don't think I would before, and that's um, like it's having fun. Like I think yeah. some of these games got a little more serious at times. That's now this is still sort of grounded in Assassin's Creed, and I hesitate to use the word grounded because it's a game about yeah. like going into a like sort of digital and, memories. Yeah, and, yeah. and, r and reading your uncle's memories or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> that's a very reductive way of explaining Assassin's I don't Creed. If I want to read my uncle's memories, uh, well, you can. Okay. And Assassin's Creed uncles <laughs> coming to peace. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so no, I think it's like they're, they're having a lot of fun with this game. Like it's bright, it's colorful. Um, yeah. I'm picking up like some Zelda vibes on it too. Like exactly. it's just, it's different for me. Like, and I like, I like the fact that they took a year off, that they have yeah. used that time to just kind of not reinvent the series. I think I that word gets thrown around a lot, but I think they've just sort of like focused the, the best like part. Extend it and build it out more. Like, yeah. you know, we say early in the year, Horizon came along and I'm getting Horizon vibes to this. It's yep. like, it's not a massively in-depth RPG like The Witcher, yeah. but add some more of those elements into it. And I think people really like that experience, mm -hmm. that light RPG. Oh yeah, yeah. They're definitely leaning into the RPG elements, and I. I, I want to see more of the that. supernatural stuff. I want to see mummies. I want to see more of the giant snakes. Yeah, yeah. So in our interview with them, they kind of explained that you know that's not something you'll see. That's not part of like the natural occurring world mm -hmm. in this game, right? Because this is sort of grounded in whatever you know reality they're trying to get as close to as possible. But there is sort of that kind of well, mythology that rolls into I don't know if it's sort of visions. Ubisoft or likes to do like uh, like drug trips. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, like <laughs> hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do like they do like to put that as stuff into their games. Yep. As, yeah, a as a company, yeah, as a as sort of a team bonding event. Yeah. Ubisoft loves to do drug trips. <laughs> I'm, I should declare, but in their games, <laughs> the Far Cry games always do that. That's true. Uh, so I have to imagine that's what these sort of fantasy creatures, because uh, I don't know, they're uh, fantasy 
monsters have never been a part of Assassin's Creed no, before. No, no, no. But I think people thought, like, you know, the game took a year off. It's coming back different. Maybe now it's just, like, sci-fi and crazy, and you fight 70-foot-tall monsters. <laughs> but it doesn't seem like well, that's the yeah. case. But um, maybe there will be sort of a hallucination, you know, whatever the word is. Yeah. I can't even say it. <laughs> drug trip. A drug trip. <laughs> As Ubisoft loves to do. <laughs> and uh, you'll get to fight something like a giant serpent. I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. And speaking of sci-fi, I still have the question, is the Animus a part of the game? So when you when die you in this game, you see that sort of like sequence break thing, and desynchronizing. When you, go into, when you go into the menus, too, yeah. it has that look. I think it'd be such a weird omission like, that that stuff doesn't work if they don't do it. Like, yeah. I, and people love that game because they love the historical fancy of yeah. Escape. But even in, like, in Syndicate, the characters were almost making fun of the animus. Uh -huh. like, I reviewed Syndicate for us, and the characters were going, oh, let's not go back to that. It's like, we're having more fun just running yeah. around London. Exactly. I, like, I, you know, like, to be honest, uh, I'll, I personally wanted them to get away from all that stuff because I felt like it actually, you know, it's supposed to, but it actively pulled me out of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, but see, you're seeing all that. The, yeah. the it's all there, yeah. Or I think they go all in and they do a present day one. Exactly. People exactly. wanted yeah. that too. Yeah, people wanted yeah. that too. I totally agree. But you I know, think people that might almost make people like enjoy the animus stuff more because you say you spend such little time, relatively speaking, with those characters. Right. Give us a game that's all about those characters, and then the next one is a flashback. You feel way more grounded with. Them. Yeah. So I mean, it's going to have a place here, which I think is interesting. If I'm open to it, I'm optimistic that they'll do something cool with it. Because um, otherwise, I'm just going to focus on this stuff because this stuff looks great. And you get to be an eagle. Yeah, That's which is pretty, awesome. That's pretty good. There's a lot of animals in this game, which is really cool. You can yeah. hunt alligators or crocodiles, whatever they were. doesn't matter. It's the same animal. <laughs> in that part of the world, I think it's crocodiles. <laughs> uh, and they made an interesting design decision with this Assassin's Creed that they're actually using in Far Cry. They made the decision to remove the minimap. The game, from the yeah. Game. The minimap is not in this Assassin's Creed, and that seems really interesting. Yeah, how do you feel about me. that? I don't know, but they said that they do... Um, eye tracking uh, research while people play their games and they found that people just stare at the minimap instead of experiencing actually, actually exploring the world that's yeah and like uh, seeing all this it. beautiful yeah that's I know it's, it's really yeah. interesting like, like one of my favorite games is Dark Souls and mm -hmm. that has one of the best video game worlds ever and there's obviously no map in that yeah. right. but it encourages you to genuinely explore the sure. world yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I just finished uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. That's the same thing, right? There's no, there's no HUD yeah. really in the entire game, um, and you see Chloe pull up a paper map every now and then. So that could be a cool way to solve for it. Yeah. But I just found myself, you know, continuing to But I did to bring up. up the map a lot a when lot. I played that. Yeah. So, it's so like, I don't know. Uh, I wonder how they'll, how they'll explain that. Um, hopefully, it doesn't mean you just have to pull up a JPEG on your phone or go buy <laughs> yeah, a exactly. or something. Because <laughs> ultimately, like, it's IGN a world wikis. of collection. Yeah. It's always <laughs> available. IGN um, wikis will definitely have a map <laughs> yeah. of Assassin's Creed Origins when it's available. That's for sure. On October 27th. Nice. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest surprises of the show for me was Monster Hunter World. Yeah. Uh, I've never, I haven't really played a Monster Hunter game. Uh, and then they unveiled that at E3 with a demo that didn't do much for me. Well, no, like, I think nobody really did the trailer that much. Mm. I don't think it really conveyed how cool that game is yeah, at all. Yeah, it just which showed is a guy like, kind of running around. It's not a good trailer then if yeah. you like. But then you actually see the game play, and I actually played this the other week. The, um, we play four player in the London IGN office. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree that their introduction was weird. <laughs> I mean, sometimes like a really cool person walks into a party and like hits a garbage can and falls. But <laughs> <laughs> bad first impression, but then like they show up and everything's cool. And then he uh, gets the nickname uh, Garbage Man. Garbage Boy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, for the longest time, I keep trying to get into these games. I did a series at IGN where uh, former IGN editor Jared Petty sat down with me, taught me how to play, brought me on my first hunt and I got like pretty good uh, close enough to kill something large enough that ended up killing me but this looks like the place to jump in yeah. finally like of all the games I've been waiting for and it's really good looking one of the sections we saw was this sort of like large lizard that came over and like ate a dinosaur and yeah. then puked it up onto <laughs> its baby so they could eat and your character just kind of hangs back and watches um, this entire area here that's uh, I believe they said it was based on Australia I mean not not the monster but no, the, yeah. the no 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 have you been to Australia because that actually is a real that's real, that's real I, I believe yeah. that actually I totally believe that that's a weird country no, I love, they've, they've designed all these really cool big monsters and then given them unique behaviors mm -hmm. so that they're all, so they feel very alive and very personalized, I guess. Yeah, and I think that they will interact with the environment based on who they are, where they are, which is really smart. Um, and the combat just looks fun. It's, it's really deep as well. Yeah. Like, uh, that's the thing, while I played it the other day, like I was playing with my colleague Joe, who 
was really big into Monster Hunter, so he was like shouting out instructions to us. But like, there's so many different button combinations, mm -hmm. and I felt like I barely knew how to use my weapon, but I wanted to learn more. Yeah. Also, what I really like about it is like it's delightfully weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it has like, like a quirky sense of humor. Like yeah. even his like run animation is like he, really exaggerated. Yeah, you get like a you get a comp and you play single player. I think you get a companion cat. Yep. That you can customize. Some you can customize very an excited armor. about. Pal who really I think cool. Palico. Yeah. 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 I think so and you can even like outfit them with all of their own gear yep. and weapons. Yeah. And you can just like spend the afternoon cooking if you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think I'm like, okay with that. I think yeah. like the uh, yeah the they showed us some of the food in the game, which is just gorgeous looking. Like I love that this. I can just say like this game has the best looking food. Uh, Plus, it has a really simple gameplay loop that's easy to get behind. Yeah. You know, go out, hunt a monster, uh, bring, bring its resources back home, craft better gear, and go out and hunt a bigger monster. Yep. Yeah. I think the balance with these things is always like, how do you satisfy these hardcore fans that just want these games to get more and more sort of strategic and obtuse? Yeah. Um, and then people like us who just want to jump into Monster Hunter for the yeah, first time. Exactly. Uh, we also got to take a look at Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and uh, I don't know that we're super qualified to get into the... the nitty-gritty of it. Yeah, nitty-gritty of that game. Uh, but I wanted to point out, we found a, an interesting fun fact about this series, a scoop gem, as, we, <laughs> as you might say. On the title screen of that game was, you know, it's like trademark Marvel, trademark Capcom, and then there was someone's name yeah. that I wasn't familiar with. I was like, who's this person? And it's the, the man that designed the character Strider. Yeah. Just get, he, he just gets his gets, credit. He, he just gets, gets his, his credit, credit in perpetuity yeah. on the title screen of any game Strider Hayabusa appears in. How do you get that deal? The, right? That's pretty That's amazing. such a crazy deal. <laughs> you're like, hey guys, don't forget about me. I know Stan Lee could get that deal. So now this, <laughs> me as well. this designer, uh, who's obviously very talented but not particularly well known, yep. gets his name right next to Marvel and Capcom on the title screen. Yeah. So, like, yeah, this is, like, a really... This, I'm just really into this game. Like, obviously, we haven't seen a lot of the X-Men characters or anything like that. There's that whole, like, legal holdup with all that. But what yeah. they're working with now is really special. Cause, so, right now, we've got the sort of New York City from the Avengers mashed with Metro City from Final Fight. Yeah, and you can um, see the Final Fight villains in the background. Back yeah, there. the Mad Gear Gang, which, again, I don't know why I know the name of that. Uh, <laughs> and, and there's the car there that I think, like, you know, Hagar beats up, even though the guy who owns it voted for him because he's a mayor. It's a weird world. <laughs> But yeah, you can jump yeah, in here and all just beat the hell out of each cool. other. All the stages are a mashup of a Capcom property and a Marvel property. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, totally. they're trying to give this actual game a real story mm -hmm, and exactly. actually make sense of this weird combination of these two universes colliding in an in-game story sense. I am so fascinated <laughs> to see how they pull that off because that sounds so completely weird. Yeah, uh, and of course, you know, Next year is an Infinity War, uh, the next uh, Avengers movie coming out, and the Infinity Stones are an important mechanic in this game. It's yeah, a way yeah. to yeah. play previous games in the series. You pick three fighters, yeah. and it was very confusing if you mm -hmm. don't play fighting games because you also pick types of characters. Yeah. And I think they try to strip that back, so you pick two characters and you pick a stone, yeah. which acts as essentially like a modifier. Yeah. So you can like when you activate it, you can like the time stone can make you. I think it makes you move more quickly, mm -hmm. and so you can change the kind of the, the layout and the tempo of a match. Yeah. Dude, Strider looks awesome in this game. Well, I totally understand why better. that guy. <laughs> but that guy gets his name on everything. <laughs> it is me, the man who made Strider. <laughs> Don't forget about me. <laughs> hey, everybody, remember me. <laughs> uh, now, one of the new announcements this week that actually turned out to be uh, one of the most popular games on IGN this week was the enhanced edition of Rise of the Tomb Raider for Xbox One X. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, it's you know, that game is a couple of years old now. It's Phenomenal game, but it's not exactly brand new. Uh, but yeah, they're just like polishing it up to take advantage of the new uh, power that's uh, afforded by the Xbox One X. And yeah, it definitely looks very pretty. Definitely cool. Uh, the Xbox One was the first place I played. Me too. Rise of the Tomb yeah, Raider. Yeah. Um, I l absolutely love that game. Yeah. I still maintain that it's better than Uncharted 4. I mean, I mean, see, see me in the streets. But come I at actually, me. yeah, come at me. <laughs> but cool. I, I really, really, really <coughs> like that game. I tried to play it again on PS4, and I was like, you know what? I've done this already. This is good to go. I played yeah. all the sort of like extra content stuff. Yeah, I checked out like all the. There's like special skins yeah. that came with the PS4 version. I checked all those out. But and maybe this is like the now, definitive, definitive, definitive edition. Yeah, maybe now is a good time to actually return to that. Yeah, play through that again. Do you think we'll start seeing this with other games? Like now that we have sure. this kind of like I think five so. consoles, I mean, I we think already so. know like a lot of re-releases. We already know the industry loves to remaster and yeah, like it's an easy HD win if you've like done all the development work on a brilliant game. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that the Xbox One X is, you know, I've I've been sort of on the fence about like who is this for and like why would you buy this? But um, I have a PS4 Pro and yeah. I think that 
them making more 4K games for it means that I'll get more 4K games in my PS4 Pro, and it's sort of just like everybody wins off of this. So, yeah. and they have to be looking at stuff like even like you know Mario Kart Deluxe on Switch sold millions of mm. copies. Like there's yeah. there's a value to taking something and bringing it back even from a year or two ago and selling it again. And, and of course, there is the uh, the issue of the next Tomb Raider, which hasn't been officially announced. We're all waiting on that. It's been a couple of years since yeah. Rise. Uh, there's been leaks about something called Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. So. Uh, you know they're still working on this on this whole series, and hopefully it won't be too long until you hear about I the next. I really thought it would be this week. Yeah, I, I mean, really, really did. They had this like uh, Tomb Raider Instagram post where Lara Croft's like looking to the future. Exactly. It's like people well, thought so the the Shadow future. is going to be announced yeah. at Gamescom. Exactly. No, no. There's shadows on her face. You can tell they're going to announce it right now. Yeah, it just didn't happen. Uh, and as an aside, I also asked uh, uh, our friends from Square Enix. Uh, if the, you know the isometric Lara Croft games, Guardian of Light yeah. and uh, Temple of Osiris, that are very good, I said I told them I would love to play that on Switch. And I don't know, you, we, when you talk to developers, you sort of get a, they have ways of giving you non-answers. Mm -hmm. But his non-answer was actually kind of more of a little bit more open-ended. And I don't know, maybe it's, it's uh, those games would definitely run on Switch. I, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe we, maybe we'll actually get those games uh, yeah, ported to cool. the Switch. Switching gears a little bit, Brian, you got to check out this game, a very cool looking game called Ruiner. Yeah. What's, what's this game all about? So uh, this is from Devolver. Uh, it's a sort of like top down, kind of like dystopian cyberpunk smash TV. Uh, where I love main, Smash TV. Yeah, it's, it was like I buy that for a so, dollar. It's so all my favorite sort of things all smashed together here. Um, so you play as this character who's effectively trying to save his brother who's been kidnapped. Um, they don't tell you a lot about him, and that's intentional. He's got this like kind of Daft Punk mask that has like, LED lights on it that display messages, and he's getting these commands from above, some sort of narrator that's kind of like go kill these people, destroy these people. Uh, the team behind it wanted to make this game kind of as like stylish and bloody as possible. They went back and back to keep making sure that there was more and more blood. Yeah, look, look, look at all this. It's I like that VHS font. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff, I think, like just sort of stylistically that's happening in the, in the UI and the interface and everything like that. Um, this game looks really fun. I didn't get a chance to play it yet, but I'm really excited for it. There's tons of different weapons. The way you move around is really interesting, too. It reminds me of that game, Mr. Shifty. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. meets... It came out fairly recently. Yeah, right? fairly recently. Um, <coughs> meets uh, some Hotline Miami stuff. I was going to so say Hotline Miami for definitely. sure. Definitely. Yeah, and it looks like it's Twin stick controls. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, the game looks very cool. Have you have you do you any experience with this game, Krupa? No, not at all. But like, it looks awesome. Like, I really like the aesthetic, like you say, mm -hmm. the VHS kind of like yeah. 80s movie style yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's got these really cool sort of like comic book cutscenes, and it's it's yeah. bringing together uh, this like very interesting, very sort of cohesive art direction. Like, it's got some Blade Runner stuff. It's got some Akira stuff in it. Yeah, like, and they're I leaning into the stylized violence yeah. thing, which I, I appreciate. Yeah, I dig that. You know, video <laughs> yeah. games are you escapism. appreciate a bit stylized violence. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was so. interesting because I talked to them about how like this is a game set in. Uh, sort of like a pre-apocalyptic future um, where everything is futuristic and weaponry is yeah. got laser scopes. And I'm like, well, why is this guy mostly running around with just like a lead pipe? Yeah. I'm like, well, sometimes he's got to bludgeon some dudes with a lead pipe. We are almost out of time today. So please tell us about one of the, n the recent surprise announcements, Biomutant. Oh, yeah. So right, this game is crazy. Yeah, this game kind of blew up. Um, I think people just really love hearing about just a new, a new thing, yep. right? That isn't like a sequel or a yeah, prequel exactly. or a remake or a reboot. Uh, Biomutant, they were on our show this week. We just put up a, uh, I believe it was 15 minute sort of extended gameplay look. Uh, maybe you saw the teaser trailer, but this is a kind of like open world 3D platforming action adventure game starring uh, a customizable cat shaped animal thing. <laughs> Oh, How's yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, For sure. There we go. <laughs> um, and so I really dig this game. It's like it's made by a, a sort of former Just Cause developers, and cool. uh, it's you've got these like sort of different skill trees that you can level up. Uh, the way you interact with the world is cool because you kind of go into these environments, these packs of like other kind of weird dystopian nightmare animals, like Mork over here. <laughs> The bio contaminated uh, yes, creep, <laughs> and like so, this world is beautiful, but it's also kind of corrupted by this like oil. Um, and they wouldn't really let me know if there was ever sort of like people present in this world, or if this is like you know after after people are gone, or if animals have only just lived here forever. Um, but I really dig it. Like the it kind of it was giving me kind of beyond good and evil vibes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll actually see it here in, in this footage, but there's like there's really bizarre creatures yeah. and then interesting vehicles that you get in, like a yeah. mech suit, and then I. 
a giant hand mm-hmm. that you ride around in that crawls along the ground. Looks totally like Tim Burton-ish and I bizarre. I really love and, that. Yeah, yeah, they said that Tim Burton was definitely one of the references, like some early Burton stuff. And I really like the, um, there's like a flying machine you can get that's yeah. like very Da Vinci. Like, um, it's all really cool. So I think that like this is, this is the kind of game I'm kind of starved for right now. All right, we're just about out of time. Real quick, Kruber, what's your, uh, the favorite game you've seen this week? Um, not favorite game, but I watched the new animated short for Overwatch last night. Oh, in yeah. In the hall. Well, with, like, Overwatch the is crowd. your favorite game, right? <laughs> it is my favorite game. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I was crying my eyes out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's a very emotional Yeah, it was a very emotional day. <laughs> very cool. Uh, Brian, favorite game? Uh, I caught a glimpse of some s- new stuff in Mario Odyssey. Oh, where, wow. uh, He's dressed as a c- uh, cartoon chef, and he's running around this, like, bakery world, and <laughs> there's all these, like, delicious candies and everything, and I just cannot wait for that game. It's I can't so wait for fun. that game either. That's October 27th, yep. same day as Assassin's Creed Origins and Wolfenstein 2 and, and Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. We have a lot of important what? decisions That's to a big make day, isn't it? <laughs> on that <laughs> day. Just take the week off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's all the time we have for this GameScoop Gamescom recap. Uh, but stay tuned. We still have more games to bring you from our live coverage of Gamescom after this.